uh, approve um, for Casket Associates to uh, pay them up to uh, no, 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 no more than $60,000 for um, an engineering um, estimate that would include everything they gave us in the proposal plus the um, optional snow melt system. Under so. alternative bids, okay. Can I, uh, I just. I'll so this has been that. moved, can you give a second? Second. Okay. Two seconds. Okay. okay. Are we approving the plan or? No, this is, this is, engineering, it this is engineering assessment, which is the next step. And so did they come back before the, the bid document? Did they, do we come back before the board before we pull the trigger on anything? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. we approve any capital. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, the capital for them to yes. prepare the bid document. 60,000? Sure. Okay. Trustee Johnson? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Aye. Trustee O'Loughlin? Aye. Trustee Garcius? Yes. Trustee Mayer. Yes. Next is the strategic plan, which we all have participated in and have reviewed. And I think it's. Are there any questions for Heather? And then one of the most important things I think uh, is that Heather's going to talk a little bit about the dashboard and how progress on the strategic plan is going to be measured. The only question I have um, is, is the language in here final, or is this still what language is being evolving? It will continue to evolve. Okay. So, right. So you're approving it as is today, certainly, but over time, it's it's a working document. So if I've got feedback, I can share it with you later. Right. Like, yeah, it's okay. not a legal yeah. document or okay. an ordinance of any okay. sort. So, um, yeah, it okay. will continue to evolve language-wise as uh, things happen. Thank okay. you. Will there be... And evolving that will include uh, green <coughs> initiatives that go along with these things. Yes, and it, it is in here under yeah. sustainable practices and one of the objectives, mm -hmm. uh, as well as environmentally friendly landscaping and another one of the objectives. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. basically these are just the objectives. It's not the actual strategies and right. tactics that will be right. used to achieve them. Mm -hmm. I just want to acknowledge, I like the first one, the sort of an aggressive timetable on <coughs> distributing materials outside this building. So I think that's great. And my only comment was on page 11, 5.4, marketing communications. It seems like beginning July 22, 2020, to identify and reach out to people who are not currently aware of the library services should be more upfront. Could yeah. Be talking to the choir. Maybe. Sure. A lot of the timetables, those will absolutely be adjusted. Okay. Um, you know, we got together as a team to sort of estimate, like, and really it's an estimate of mm -hmm. what needs to come first before something else right. happens. Right. So we, we discussed that so, at that point. You know, right. You know. So it's not that that particular month is a magical month for it to happen. <laughs> it might happen a lot sooner. Um, but it's just that in the scope of it, it's, you know, further along um, based on its uh, prioritization and the, the structure of it. In our history, I don't think that we've ever delayed doing something because the strategic plan said that we weren't supposed to start. <laughs> right, right. And to, to Lisa's point, um, for the implementation monitoring, each objective has, each goal has a goal owner. Um, and that is a staff person who takes responsibility for overseeing that goal. And they have a, they put together a team so that they can monitor it. And then there are quarterly uh, reports that will happen accordingly. And there's all sorts of, uh, there's like a structure in place for that, for the implementation status reports. And those will uh, come to the board, right? <laughs> Well, and I feel that the, the document, even if the wording isn't exactly right yet, is, is encompassing everything that we've discussed over the last several months in all the meetings we've been involved with. So I'm comfortable motioning that we approve the moving forward with the with the um, so plan. plan. And I second it. Okay. Do we need a roll call? Um, no. Don't, no. 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 All in favor? Just a voice. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> <clears throat> Scheduled Finance Committee discussion items. Both Ron. Well, we're targeting May. Do you want me to send out? Um, that would probably be easier okay. than our trying to sit here and Do you have scan calendars. 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> night time, night time. <laughs> okay. So. For May, correct? Yes. And I'm back in May, so I'm not, actually, I'm probably not traveling much at all in May, so. Should there be some preliminary work done before that? Well, that's okay. usually staff yeah, that's what activity. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Heather, are you ready? Yeah, so we have a new reader services librarian in adult services. Uh, this was for um, our re retired librarian, Leslie Litoff. Mm -hmm. So um, Rachel Garcia will be joining us. She comes to us from Highland Park. Uh, we also have a new part-time digital services assistant, John Martino, who's a graduate from DePaul, so you might see John in our uh, technology lab. We had a very successful staff day, uh, Miguel um, Figueroa uh, came from ALA's Center for the Future of Libraries, and he discussed uh, library trends and um, all sorts of ways that we can connect that to new services and innovation. We also had a head of security who came from Warren Newport, and he talked about um, security communication and uh, problem logs and different types of training, uh, things like, you know, how often do you do drills and all sorts of details like that. It was really helpful. Uh, and we have Polaris training. So um, as you know, there's a new catalog coming, so that's going to happen April 17th. So um, all staff are trained. Uh, they're spending a lot of time training this month to get up to speed on Polaris. The library will be closing in 15 minutes. Please bring your materials to the circulation desk now for checkout. Thank you. So the salary grade project is completed, uh, as you guys are all at that meeting. Yeah. So um, we discussed the new compensation structure and um, all the ins and outs of the different um, titles and grades and how that will work. And that will be discussed in terms of how the budget impact at mm -hmm. the May finance Have you gotten um, comments from staff about doing this yet? Or? Well, leadership team has been informed all along okay. um, right. for months. Mm -hmm. They've been working on it, mm -hmm. so they're very familiar with it. Um, Frontline staff, not as familiar with it, but they know what's coming. They've mm -hmm. been talking with their supervisors, and um, Mike and I will be going out to every department at the first week of April, mm -hmm. and we'll be talking to staff about it and what it means. I hope it'll be yeah. positive. I think it should be. Right. I think so, too. It, mm -hmm. it just makes it really equitable and clear exactly. and transparent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the patrons need to know anything, or will they even notice anything? You know, I don't think change. so. I mean, okay. it's more of an internal gotcha. mm -hmm. structural change. That Except it, for the lists. The what? Lists. People's lists on the, the catalog. Oh, for the new catalog. Yeah, absolutely. But for the compensation structure, oh, the compensation. I'm probably sorry, not as much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you're absolutely right. The catalog, we are just starting now yeah, putting a lot of information out there to mm -hmm. the public about that. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm asleep. So that was talking about Polaris, five too, you said <laughs> I was talking about Polaris, too, in terms of... I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, we already talked enough about landscaping um, sure. and Polaris. we got big plans for National Library Week. Um, there's... The um, film is done. It is amazing. Um, we're putting the promotional film that uh, Clara Tomas, local filmmaker, did about our library. Cool. Uh, and we will be putting it on our website. I'll send you all the links so you can see it. We have a it's a six-minute film, the full thing, but we trimmed it down to three minutes for most things. Mm -hmm. We're going to preview it before our programs, for example. Uh, and then we did, like, one-minute snippets for social media. So it's very clever. It's, mm -hmm. it's really nice. So we're going to really do a big social media splash, a get-caught-reading hashtag campaign, mm. pop-up programming. So that's exciting. Cool. Um, one book is coming very, very soon. I hope you guys can make it to see really a nice. more Guitar RSVP for that? Or, or yeah. Guitar no. RSVP for the one? Just, or just no. show up at the one at Junior High? Just, like just show up. up. Yeah. Yep. Oh, are you not concerned about crowds? Overcrowding? Okay. Uh, yeah, we are. Um, and this year we're definitely alerting the police department that we need help with traffic control because, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a big crowd, so get there early. Um, 
we had record setting participation in winter reading for youth and uh, we already started installing the fiber network. They were here doing some stuff just the other day so that's happening fairly quickly. Um, the book bike is ready to launch. We have a book bike task force um, getting ready to roll and uh, we launched the coffee service. Uh, we went through about 80 cups in the first week. That's something that Kathleen <laughs> was curious about. And Which is, you know, yeah. I've been drinking coffee. And yeah. French, French roast. And French roast. <laughs> They're drinking a lot of French roast. Uh, second is the hazelnut. And it's, oh, oh. it's good. <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. I Which one did you have? The hazelnut or the French roast? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it worked. I just knew it had caffeine in it. That's what I needed to get through the meeting. All right, so that, that's the end of my report. Okay, nice. I think French roast. I sh we should note, though, that PLA is coming up, and Lisa will be going to PLA tomorrow. tomorrow. If I can get out. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's storming oh, again on these. Right. I have staff that haven't been able to get out yet. Oh. I just joined today. I joined the ALA today. Oh, good. Yeah. good, good. Um, Complicated website. What should we know? <laughs> Jan. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. There That's are okay. a few I things. Forget I'll try to get through. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know the early returns? <laughs> okay. In the February 22nd um, ILA <laughs> brochure here, mm -hmm. the biggest thing there is that so. the uh, Woodson Library has been refurbished in Chicago, and this is a, a library that's always been the pride of the area, as well as the pride of Chicago. And they have a wonderful black research collection with all his things and many others. And uh, the area of the neighborhood is very excited about having it open it up. It's been closed for a while and uh, gotten kind of dingy and everything, but they're really putting it back together and uh, hoping to make it star of that area and a place where people can go. And there's so many visitors that they've had so far that have uh, come, probably my age, bringing little ones with them and just saying, you know, it's, I've spent my whole life in this area. This, this library is where I used to go, and it means a lot to me that they're opening it back up again, and I can bring my daughters and granddaughters. So that's a very big thing uh, in the city. On the uh, next one, let's see, which is March 1st. Uh, the articles there, uh, Dan would be interested if you haven't seen it on this one, at Growing Libraries, Patrons Collect Seeds to Grow Fruits, Vegetables, and Flowers. Now, I did look into that. Um, it doesn't appear that they're doing anything special, like it's not a seed saver thing that they're doing, it's just that they have seeds. And so families can come, or like the example they gave a mother and her daughter, coming and getting you know, 10 carrot seeds, and then they were going to go out and plant it and you know, eat it and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's the seed savers is something entirely different. And um, the main area for that is in Decorah, Iowa, which is the oldest, and the one where they actually have refrigeration and everything else because it's it's saving seeds from the prairie oh. and from Illinois. So it's a little different. There are two, two levels of seed kind of things at libraries. Um, the NIU library boasts at least 3,000 comics, <laughs> comic books, including the Black Panther originals. Now that's really cool given the movie that's out there and everything like that. And you can just, it's in DeKalb, and you can just walk in and, and browse through the comic books that they have any time that you want. And the... Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Heather, have you come across comic book stuff in all your library? Is that something you thought about? Oh, about having comics? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've done it in prior libraries. We, we have them, we have them <laughs> here. We have, we, we have bound editions of all kinds mm -hmm, of yeah. We do. We have yeah. some. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's and it's an ever popular growing mm -hmm. field. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's worth considering. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. And the last uh, article, are libraries closing the book on late fees? Well, it's kind of what we have just decided here that um, 
on the website now, it says that if you have a book out and it hasn't come back and it can be renewed with this new system, it will automatically renew it. And that's what uh, a couple of the libraries uh, have done in other places. And so they've lost maybe $40,000 in fees, but they've tried to make it up in other ways because it's been a real comfort in Boone and people, of course, who take books out of the library really appreciate that, that they're not going to be done or whatever else. Um, the next uh, is March 7th, and uh, just a reminder that if you are a member of the IALA, you can vote hmm. in the candidate election on and the bios will be available on the ILA website pretty soon if you want to take a look at them. Um, the next one, <laughs> this was just kind of fun. The voters picked the top 10 movies in Illinois history. Now, you're not going to get a lot of current choices. <laughs> Anybody guess we're talking Illinois history. Anybody guess what the top one Blues was? Brothers. Blues well, Brothers. Blues Brothers. That's right. right. Yeah, that I, I, I'm exactly aware of the, right. yeah, they're doing a, Illinois is doing a whole list of top tens, not just movies. Uh -huh. And 